This is Face to Face Celebration Church. I'm Dennis Watson. I have as my guest today, Pastor James Fletcher, pastor of the Celebration Church River Parishes Congregation based in Laplace. And this week we're talking about one of the Beatitudes where Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, Pastor James, neither you nor I are always pure in heart, uh, uh, yeah. and we're still trying to be pure in heart. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, I grew up in Avery Island, Louisiana. Home it's close of, to uh, New Iberia, right? Yes, yes, home of the Tabasco, right. born and raised there, uh, and then moved to New Orleans uh, around 10, 11 years ago. Came to know okay. the Lord around five years ago, mm-hmm. uh, and just took a path to, to where I am now, being the uh, campus pastor of the church before it was the youth pastor. Now, what was your life like growing up? Ah, uh, man, I, I had a pretty, pretty rough upbringing, um, you know, in and out of the streets, drugs, mm-hmm. all of those different things, was addicted to different drugs, and uh, lived a rough life right. um, before I came to know the Lord. Well, being out in the world like you were, you yeah. obviously knew what impressed the people of the world. Yes. In fact, just in general, what, what yeah. impresses people in our society? What impresses people throughout the world? Man, from uh, acquisitions of things, houses, cars, you know, uh, the jewelry, right. the money, all right. of those things like that, the fame, the popularity, you know, that's the things that, uh, that people love and, and most of the time they want. And sometimes it's the clothes and the style yeah, and all that kind of yeah, stuff of as well. But the big question we want to address today and throughout the week is what really impresses God. Now, again, in the Beatitudes, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, uh, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Yeah. Now, how does a person become pure in heart? Ah, man, by first off, you're giving your life to the Lord, right? right? That's where it starts. Uh, you're praying for salvation to the Lord, and you're walking with Him, right? Living upright, walking in a way that, that would, I say it simply make Him smile. Right? Yeah, I can't be pure without the Lord. You can't be yes. pure without pure in heart without the Lord. I mean, that's the first key is surrendering your life for to sure. the Lord. Now, pure, being pure in heart doesn't mean somebody's perfect, does it? No, not at all, because I'm not, and I know you're not as I well. Know, I, I know I'm not as well. Yeah. It, what does it, it doesn't mean to be sinless, but it means to have a desire for godliness in our lives. Yeah. And not only just godliness, but a desire to live with integrity in our lives. Yeah. In fact, uh, some time back, we studied this uh, passage of Scripture with our pastors. We talked about four uh, things that integrity means. Uh, yeah. A lot of people don't understand. What's one of those, what are those four things? Uh, totality, right? Uh, what we believe and value impacts every part of our lives. So that's integrity, is yeah. that that what we really value and believe not, it doesn't just impact our life on Sunday, but Monday, yeah. Tuesday, every throughout day. the week, and in every part of yeah. our lives. In yeah. fact, the word integrity uh, comes from a math word, integer. Yeah. Integration is the opposite of segregation. Sure. means to bring everything together. Now, too often, sometimes we see life like a pie. Yeah. Uh, and slices of the pie. There's yeah. my work slice and my family yeah, slice man. and my money slice and my uh, fun slice and yeah. then my church and religious or spiritual sure. slice. But the but when we talk about integrity, it's like the filling in the pie. It yes. spreads over the whole pie. Yes. What's another word for integrity? Uh, authenticity, right? We're talking about when you're completely honest and transparent in any circumstances and situations. So integrity is about totality and authenticity. Yeah. What's the, what's another word? Uh, sincerity. Okay. You know, being sincere with people. Um, you know, as well as being honest with them, but truly being sincere about it. That means doing the right things for the right reasons yes. as well. And what's for another sure. word for integrity? And then reliability, right? You're looking for people that are reliable, right? They're going to tell you something and they're going to do it. And those are, man, those are tough challenges yeah. to live uh, with totality, authenticity, sincerity, and reliability in yeah. our lives. But when we live that kind of life, that's when we're living with integrity in our lives, and that's when the Lord Himself is pleased yeah, with our lives. For sure. I'm here today with Pastor James Fletcher, pastor of the Celebration Church River Parish Congregation in Laplace. And this week we're looking at one of the Beatitudes of Jesus, uh, the attitude where Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We're learning about uh, the value of integrity. We talked to Pastor James yesterday. Do you remember those four words you talked to us about what integrity really means? Yes, we talked about totality, authenticity, sincerity, and also reliability. So those those words kind of give us a... A uh, synopsis of what integrity is all about. Yeah. So here's the question I want to ask today uh, and tomorrow. Why yeah. should we strive to live with integrity? Can you give us some answers to that question? Yeah, one of the things is it brings balance to mm-hmm. our lives, right? Proverbs 10, 9 says, People with integrity walk safely, but those who follow crooked paths will be exposed. So people who with integrity walk sa- safely. I'm thinking about yes. somewhat times up north in the wintertime when the streets are icy and cold and yeah. slippery and you, it's hard to keep your balance. What, what you're saying and what the Bible's saying is that when we have integrity in our hearts and lives, it helps keep us firmly planted yes. in our lives. And rooted in the Lord. Yeah. And rooted in the Lord, strong in the Lord, yeah. helps us to maintain balance in our yeah. lives. And uh, I guess the, the more balance we have, the less 
messes we make in our life. For sure. Because there are some messes that we can make if there's no balance. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, what's another, what's another value or reason for living with integrity? Well, we talked about balance. Let's talk about boundaries, right? To put brown, boundaries in our lives. It says honesty guides people, right? But dishonesty, uh, dishonesty destroys treacherous people. One thing I like to say is wisdom is knowing the right path to, to take, but integrity is actually taking that path. It's actually taking that path. It, integrity shows us the right way to go. It helps us know yeah. what to do next and what not to uh, yeah. do. Uh, say that again, what you said earlier like, about wisdom and integrity, because that yeah. really resonated with me. Yeah, wisdom is knowing the right path to take, but integrity is actually taking that path. Oh, wow. Uh, what's the third benefit or value of living with integrity? Ah, it brings benefits to others. It actually benefits others when you're living with integrity. The Bible talks all about it, but in Proverbs specifically, it says the godly walk with integrity and blessed are their children who follow them. It's not just you. It's your children as well. It's your children as well. Now, you have three children. Yes, I have three kids. And yes. uh, you want the very best for them in their lives, you and your yeah. wife, Alicia. Uh, now, you, sometimes people think, well, if I want the best for my kids, I've got to yeah. give them the best education or for leave sure. them with the most money or give them the best yeah. possessions. But what you really want to live, live with them is a value for integrity. In yeah. Them. And when you live that way, you know, what happens is because I want my children to follow God, right? I want right. them to, to look to my example and want to follow God mm -hmm. and not, not want to follow him in spite of what they see. Yeah, there's know? another verse that says that same thing. It says, the Lord curses the house of the wicked, but he blesses yeah. the home of the upright. And what's yeah. another value of living in integrity? It brings blessings to other people's lives as well. You'll and be able to bless others when you live with integrity. And it brings blessings to our lives. Yes. Remember what Job said. Now, Job uh, went through a lot of challenges. In fact, we just what Job said one time. Yeah. It says, if you pray to God and seek the favor of the <laughs> Almighty, if you are pure and live with complete integrity, God will rise up and store and restore your happy home. And though you started with little, you will end up with much. That's Job chapter 8, verses 5 through 7. And we yeah. know the story of Job that that's exactly what happened because yeah. he didn't allow the circumstances or difficulties or challenges of life to rob him of his integrity. Yeah. He wound up being more blessed in the end than he was in the very beginning. Yeah. Now, I'm here this week with Pastor James Fletcher, who's a pastor of Celebration Church, River Parishes, uh, there in the Laplace area. And we're talking this week about one of the Beatitudes where Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And we're talking about specifically about integrity, and integrity is being pure in heart. We talked uh, yesterday about some of the values of living with integrity, but some of the blessings that come from living with integrity. But we'll talk today and tomorrow about what does it take to live with integrity. There's got to be some practical things we can do that demonstrate we're living with integrity. Give us a yeah. couple of those today. Yeah, the first thing is we got to make sure that we're telling the truth, right? <clears throat> Simple and plain that we're telling the truth. The Lord is a big proponent of verbal integrity. Yeah, so in other words, if you are not a truth teller, yeah. If you are a constant liar, you, you're not telling the truth. Yeah. But lots of people struggle with telling the truth these days. And that's the truth. You know, the Bible tells us the Lord detests lying lips, though, right? It says, uh, but he delights in those who tell the truth. You know, one thing I tell my kids and everyone else is that when people think of us, they should never doubt a word that we say. Wow. That's a challenge. Now, what I'm told is through yeah. different surveys and stuff like that yeah. is about nine out of ten Americans lie routinely. Yeah. In fact, the Institute of Behavior Modification determined that 97% of Americans lie on a regular basis, telling over a thousand lies a year. Now, yeah. in other words, we become a nation of liars. Husbands lie to wives, wives lie to their husbands, employers lie to employees, employees yeah. lie to their employers, parents lie to their children, children lie to their parents. And believe it or not, the media lies yeah. and <laughs> politicians lie. Yes. And the lines become a common fort of form of communication. But the Bible says God is opposed to lying. Yeah. Uh, he wants us to be truth tellers. You know, in fact, remember what Jesus said in John 8? He said, when we lie, we're more yeah. like the devil yeah. than any other time in our father life. Father of lies, right? That's right. Jesus called the devil a liar. Yeah. Uh, and he is a liar and the father of all lies and the yeah. father of all lies. I don't want to be like the devil. You don't no, want to be like the devil. Of course not. In fact, there's a great story in the Bible, <clears throat> Acts chapter 5, about a couple named Ananias and Sapphira. And the Bible says they lied about how much they gave to the work yeah. of the Lord, how much yeah. they gave to the church. I'm sure nobody listening to this program yeah. has ever done that. And, but they did. And, and when they were confronted by Peter, who was leader of the church at that time, Peter said, why have you allowed Satan to fill your heart yeah. to lie to the Holy Spirit? So we got to be truth tellers. What's another thing we got to do to be a person of integrity? I mean, we have to keep our promises, right? Proverbs 25, 14 says, a person who promises a gift but doesn't give it, is like clouds and the wind that brings no rain. That reminds us we got to be careful about keeping our promises. Now, yeah. let's, let's, uh, let's be honest. It's hard to keep your promise. It is. It it's is. hard to keep your promises to your kids. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, 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 kids ever ask you to do something, you say, well, maybe, or they don't hear maybe, they hear. Yes. That's what we're going to yeah. do, right? And it's crazy because you say that, you know, there's a study that shows that the number one cause for bitterness in kids mm. is broken promises by parents. Wow. That's yeah. the number one cause? The number one cause of bitterness in kids wow. is when the parent says they're going to do something and they don't do it. Now, I broke my promise. You broke your promise. I'm sure about it. But yeah. here's the thing. We've got to become better at keeping our word and keeping our promises and telling the truth yeah. if we want to be known as people of integrity. And again, yeah. like we discovered yesterday, when we when we live integrity-filled lives, it'll be a blessing to God, a blessing to others, a blessing to ourselves. Yeah. I mean, one of the best things we could do is live integrity-filled lives. Yeah. So uh, we've been here this week with Pastor James Fletcher, who's the pastor of Celebration Church River Parish Congregation that's in Laplace. And we've I've been talking about the value of integrity in our lives, uh, the value of living a a life that's pure in heart towards the Lord and towards others. Yesterday we talked about a couple of uh, ways that we can live out integrity in our lives. Remind us what those two things were. Uh, We're talking about telling the truth and making sure that we keep our promises. Okay, those are real important if we want to live with integrity. What, What are a couple other things? Man, you have to refrain from stealing, right? You have to refrain from stealing. Yeah. Uh, Man... Now, I, I don't think anybody likes a thief. You like no, a thief? No, I sure don't. You don't? I sure don't. Uh, no, I don't know anybody who likes a thief. But, yeah. but the truth of the matter is, almost all of us, in some way, now listen, don't don't yeah. write us off here. Almost all of us, in some way, have stolen at some time or another in our lives. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about burglaries or car mm-hmm. thefts. It's a big problem here in our yeah. region. I'm not talking about hold us. But I'm, t- I, I'm, not, I'm not even talking about shoplifting and taking what belongs to the company you work for and all those yeah. kinds of things. But there are different ways of stealing that people are involved in, which shows they lack integrity in their lives. What are yeah. some of those ways? You got simple stealing, right? Taking property or money that doesn't belong mm-hmm. to you. Also That's mean like seeing some, seeing some money on a dresser or yep. seeing some money on the counter yep. and just taking it and say, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is my lucky day. What, yeah. what, what's another form of stealing? You have sophisticated stealing, right? Embezzling, defrauding, right? Uh, and, and stealing from people in a sophisticated way. You're planning these things out. You know, one of the things I so- see sometimes, and I hate to see it, is like yeah. some big Christian name, some big Christian personality yeah. has gotten in trouble because they've taken people's money for a particular cause, and then they've... Uh, not carried through on their claims. That's yeah. that's stealing, in it, yeah. and it's a it's a bad testimony to all of us in the body of Christ. What are some other ways of stealing? Man, you also have spiritual stealing, right? Robbing the Lord of time, talents, tithes, and even offerings. Well, the Bible says that we're to be faithful in bringing our tithes, not just our financial tithes, but giving yeah. time our time to the Lord and all those kinds of things. But and we might not think it's a big deal, but it's a big deal to God. Yeah. Also, uh, when I think about stealing, I think about. Uh, not paying your bills. Yeah, for sure. And there's something else that I was thinking about. When you don't tell the truth, right, and you're not living with integrity, um, you're not mm-hmm. just stealing from your family, from your coworkers, uh, from people around you and friends and things like that, you're also stealing from the Lord. And I tell people that all the time. Well, you know, the Bible says the wicked borrow and never repay. And the Bible also says Jesus said that we need to be, and Paul said we need to be careful in paying our taxes. And yeah. I know a lot of people are like, man, I need to, Get as much as I can for the yeah. government, but but the Bible says that kind of stuff is wrong. Uh, yeah. Here's what uh, Jesus said in Luke sixteen eleven: If you're untrust, untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? Yeah. What does that mean to us? Uh, it means that why why would you not be trustworthy with the things here? Because we have to be faithful with the small, right? right. Because if we're not and we're untrustworthy with that, why would yeah. the Lord even entrust us with anything more? You know, I just thought of one other way that people steal and they don't even realize they steal. Yeah. That's when they don't give their best at work. Wow. It says work as I'm working to the Lord, right? <laughs> That's what it says. Yeah. It says give our best. We're, we're sure. being a representative of the Lord when we're at work, and so we're to give our best. And when we don't, I mean, we yeah. are showing a lack of integrity in our lives. Yeah. Now, this week has been my pleasure and privilege to be with Pastor James Fletcher, pastor of Celebration Church, River Parish's Congregation in Laplace. And we've been talking about a good subject, but a really challenging subject, the subject of uh, living with integrity. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And so we've been talking about why we should live with integrity in our lives and how we can live with integrity in our lives. In fact, yeah. just go over real quickly some of the ways you said we can uh, what, what it, we can live with integrity in our lives. Yeah, you got to tell the truth, right? tell the and truth. Make sure that you're keeping your promises. Right, right. And then here's a big one, refrain from stealing. There were so many ways we talked about that you could actually really be stealing. That's right. What are some other ways that we can uh, live with integrity? This is a big one, I think, for a lot of people. We have to <laughs> refuse to gossip, right? Refuse to talk about others, right? The Lord is a big proponent of relational integrity. Wow, that means 
not talking about others, not telling things about others that we don't yeah. know to be truth and stuff sure. like that. Two ladies yeah. were talking one time. One lady said, I better stop. I've already told more than I heard. And that happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. That happens a lot yeah. with people. And the Bible says when you do that, you lack integrity in your life. Uh, yeah. Proverbs eleven thirteen. Do you have that verse in front of yeah, you? Yeah, it says, a gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence, right? The those gospel who, should f- spread a little faster uh, than gossip. Oh, right? wow. Yeah. Uh, those who are trustworthy, those who are filled with integrity will be able to keep a confidence. Sure. Oh, what are some other ways that we can live with integrity? We have to be transparent. Being transparent is big. Um, I'm a proponent of that. I love right. when people tell me the truth, right? right? And they just be transparent with the situation. Instead of trying to cover something up, they're just transparent about it. And we work through it, we pray through it, and we let God do his thing. Now, both of you and I come from chemical dependency backgrounds. Yes. And oftentimes in recovery, ministry i know they had the saying you got to fake it till you make it yeah and i understand why they say that you said you got but here's what i know uh, the more i fake it the less integrity i have in my yeah, life for sure uh so i've got to try to be genuine i got to yeah. take off a mask in fact uh, this whole concept of integrity uh one of the words is uh you remember back in the days of the greeks of old mm-hmm. they had these plays and yeah. and uh, one person would play a person, one person in one set, another person in another set, they would yeah. hold up a mask in front of their face, and uh, that was called, they were called a hypocritos. Yeah. We get our word hypocrite, hypocrite. from that word. Yeah. And so when we're not the same person all the time, uh, when we're not transparent with others, we yeah. are living out integrity. And how exhausting is that to cool. just continually have a mask on and not be yourself? It's you exhausting. Know? Yeah. You know, to become a person of integrity, we need to learn to become faithful in the small things as well as the big things. That's what Jesus said. Yeah. We need to commit to living daily by the principles and practices of God's Word. Yeah. And we need to honor God in everything we do and say. What am I? Yeah. One of the most challenging verses in the Bible to me is Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, mm. where the Apostle Paul wrote, Whatever you do, uh, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. That means that no matter what I say, no matter what I do, how I live, Every yeah. day, I'm supposed to be a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, Pastor James, there are a lot of verses about integrity in the Bible, about, be pure, about be, being pure in heart. But yeah, read this last passage from Psalm chapter 15, verses 1 through 5, as we close out this week's segment of Face to Face. Definitely. It says, Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? You may enter your, pr- your presence on your holy hill. Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right speak the truth from sincere hearts. Those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord and keep their promises even mm, when wow. it hurts. Those who lend money without charge and interest and who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Such people will stand firm forever. Well, the Bible says if we'll live with integrity and depend upon the Lord, yeah. we'll stay strong in this life and be strong in the next life. Such people yeah. will stand firm forever. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Face to Face with Celebration Church. 